Hey guys, this week's tip is a special edition. In fact, it's a request from one of our many fanboys out there, and just like Casey Kasem, we're going to keep our feet on the ground and reach for the stars. What's really cool about this request is that our fanboy went out to our portal. You know that one at locksoftware.com. You hit the members button, put in your login information. Well, he went out there and did that, and he looked at our postal code plugin document that we posted out there about a week and a half ago, and he said, tip of the week, could you show me a little bit more about that? Well, that's what we're here to do. Okay, let's take this plugin for a ride. Now, in order to get the zip code functionality installed, you're going to have to contact your lock authorized dealer, and he or she can take care of it for you. They can get it done in a lickety split. It's a pretty easy installation. And what will happen is some new functions, features, and some new reporting will open up within the system. In a nutshell, what this plugin does is allow you, Mr. Retailer, to collect the zip code of your customers at any time during the transaction. That information is then stored within the SMS Electronic Journal, and if you know anything about our EJ, you know the search capabilities are second to none. With the zip code information there, you're able to search by zip code, by date, and by all sorts of other criteria to determine what the heck it is you want to find out about your customers. This capability can now be the ultimate companion to some of your marketing efforts and store flyers. So let's take this baby for a test drive. When your dealer installs the zip code plugin, there are several methods that he or she can set you up with to call the zip code within a transaction. Perhaps one of the easiest is just simply to put a little button over here. It's calling a function behind the scenes so that when you're in a transaction, you hit the button and you'll see a little window pop up here and ask us for the zip code. So let's go ahead and enter a transaction. We're going to go ahead and ring up our energy drink item here, and we're at the end of our transaction. This is all the guy's buying at this time. The cashier would then ask, Mr. Customer, could you please tell me your zip code? The cashier would hit the zip code button right over here. You'll see this new little window pop up that gives us the option to go ahead and input the zip code right within the transaction. Now a couple things we'll point out. To enter in the zip code, you simply have to touch or click into the box here that says enter the code. Now if you're on a touch screen and you don't have a keyboard around, what the heck are you supposed to do? Well, just come over here and hit the little button called keyboard and you'll see an on-screen keyboard pops up here. Then we can go ahead and punch in our zip code, just like we would on any touch screen. Go ahead and hit OK and you'll see that it goes ahead and populates that field right within the transaction. You'll see it's labeled as P code and that's the code that we will search on within the electronic journal later on. Let's go ahead and ring this guy out and I'll take you into the back end and show you what happens there. Okay, so now we hopped over into SMS Pro in the back office and we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of that data we've been capturing over this past week. Does everybody know how to get to the electronic journal? Well, it's pretty simple, and you know what? Even I can show you how to do it. All you have to do is come up here to the main button toolbar and hit the one that says Journal. That takes us into the main journal menu. Once we're within the main EJ search menu, what we're going to want to look at is the function that we created to help us input that postal code. So what we do, we come over here to the main menu on the left, we hit Functions, then we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see that there's a new button and a new report listed here when your dealer installed the zip code plugin. It's called Summary Postal Zip Code right here. Click on it, and it's going to bring you to the main menu. Now once we're within the main zip code search criteria page, you'll see it looks just like every single other report in SMS. We can search by day, week, month, or year. We can set our own date range. And oh yeah, don't worry, that handy dandy calendar tool is there if you just double click on those fields. In a multi-store environment, we can target individual stores, all stores like what we have here, or we could select a region. We also have the ability to search for the zip code with a sequence of numbers, you know, a sequence that contains or maybe a sequence that is equal to specifically five digits, or maybe a sequence of numbers that it starts with or even ends with, so plenty of search criteria. And oh yeah, don't forget, we click this Add button up over here in the top right, and we have the ability to add this to our preferred reports page, or we can even put it to a task within the main SMS window, you know, the Buy, Sell, Manage tab. Pretty cool stuff. So let me show you what the reporting looks like. I'm going to go ahead and select today. I went ahead and put in a couple transactions for you. We're going to hit launch. The query runs and it's going to pull back the zip codes, the total sales, and the transaction quantity count listed right here in this little window. Now just like all the other reports within SMS, this report is going to remind us the criteria that we use to search. You can see we picked today's date and we're looking at all stores. Now unlike some of the other reports, you're looking at this thing and saying, what the heck can I do with this? Well look at this. We can double click on any of these headers and we can sort. A lot like cubes, so we can sort by total sales from descending order. We can sort by postal or zip code in ascending or descending order, just simply click the header. Or we can look at the ones with the most transactions. Just simply double click the header and you can see that changing right before your eyes.
Now, if you want to print this baby, just come up here and click the print button. Pretty simple. But remember, we're in EJ and we're searching in the electronic journal. So there's some other cool stuff that we can do. Look at this zip code, 29615. There were a heck of a lot of transactions today and a decent dollar amount. We want to dig down a little bit further. So let's go ahead and click this View Transactions button. And just like every other EJ function that we have, a summary window comes up and shows us the individual transactions. Now since we're in EJ, we have all the power associated with our electronic journal. We can drill down even further to a summary level view of the transaction by hitting that summary button and you can see you'll get a broad overview. If you've got a DVR hooked up, look right here. You can click the video button and that'll take you right to the video of the transaction. And you can also print a copy of the receipt by simply clicking this receipt button. The other thing that we can do is look at the full transaction, basically a duplicate of the receipt in electronic format by simply clicking that all button. You can see line item detail of the transaction as it's happening. Same thing again, you have the ability to go directly to the video or even print a duplicate receipt right within this transaction. One other thing we might as well show you while we're here, and if you don't have too much familiarity with the EJ, you might not know this. If you come right over here and hit this button that says key, look what happens. It's showing us every keystroke as it happens within the transaction. So to translate this a little bit, basically our cashier scanned this item here, this vinegar item. What is happening behind the scenes are a couple keystrokes, which are functions within SMS. So you can see we did a clear, we did a PLU code one, which is set up for this particular UPC. It's telling us it was line number one. We then went to a unit quantity after the fact and we changed the quantity to five. So that's some pretty powerful stuff. You can see exactly what is going on by keystroke within the transaction. Well, that's it for this week's tip. Hopefully, we've given you a couple ideas about how one simple little plugin can help complement all those marketing efforts your store is doing. And for all you fanboys out there, if there's a tip you'd like to see, email us anytime at sales at locksoftware.com. Until next time, have a great day.